Hey y'all, wanted to speak to you today about a change to the 2026 National Electrical Code that I am super excited about. And I know that probably seems a little weird uh, to be excited about a code change, being an electrician for the last 30 years. Typically the code changes that come out might make me a little frustrated uh, until I fully understood what the intent was. Uh, but this one, the intent is clearly to keep workers like yourself more safe. And I think that's crucial. And it's around arc flash stickers. So these arc flash labels uh, in the 2026 NEC, we have some changes here that are going to be crucial to helping you stay safe. Let's take a look. So 11016 is the area that we're talking about. And with this section, there's uh, a few changes that were made. Um, some of them here are highlighted, of course, as they typically are, but I wanna pull up the 2023 text in the reference panel here, just to take a look at what else has changed that you can't quite see here because there's some words that are missing. So if we go to 110.16b in the 2026 NEC, and we're talking about here other than dwelling units, so we're talking commercial and industrial applications, um, but arc flash labels had to, in the 2023 20, uh, NEC, if we look over here, uh, they had to be applied to service equipment and feeder supplied equipment rated 1000 amps or more. So that 1000 amps threshold was a big piece to this because any equipment that was smaller than that did not require that arc flash label. Now, if we move over to the 2026 language in the middle of the screen, we don't see anything around 1000 amps. So essentially that threshold has been removed. Um, and now we have all equipment uh, that's service equipment or feeder supplied equipment. And then we have some examples here, such as switchboard, switch gear, enclosed panel boards, industrial control panels, meter socket enclosures, and motor control centers. So those are just examples of what, what we're talking about here, uh, but they have to have uh, these arc flash labels. And arc flash labels previously were needed to be in accordance with applicable industry practice, but there was no specific criteria listed in the 2023 language you see on the right. In the 2026, we see that we now have list items. And these list items are important because they're telling us specifically what has to be on the label. So a label like this, we need to figure out, would this be adequate? Would it meet that 2026 NEC criteria? So let's come back to that in a minute. So what we specifically have to have on the label is nominal system voltage, arc flash boundary, available incident energy or minimum required level of personal protective equipment. Now I want to emphasize that line because that's a big or. So when we talk about that line, um, it has to be either the incident energy listed on the label or it can tell you what the minimum level of PPE that's required is, but it can't give you both. And that goes back to a requirement in NFPA 70E. That's how it's stated within that. Um, and then the last item is the date the assessment was completed. So that's that's important because if you look back at the 2023 text, it needs to it said it needed to include the date the label was applied. Well, application of the label, sticking it to the piece of equipment, may not be the date that the calculation was actually done and performed based on how the electrical system was at the time. So it's important that the date the assessment was completed is also put on these labels to meet that 2026 NEC criteria. Now, if we look at uh, NFPA 70E, the 2024 edition, and go to the 130.5H for equipment labeling. Again, here on the right, we see the list items there are very similar. Uh, we got nominal system voltage, arc flash boundary, at least one of the following, and now we see the incident energy here. Uh, and if we go down, we see the arc flash PPE category. So we have those two options um, that we can do, but it has to be one or the other. And that goes back into 130.5F, where it specifically states that one of the following methods shall be used to select arc flash PPE, either the incident energy method or the arc flash PPE method. And then right here is where it states either but not both methods shall be permitted to be used for the same piece of equipment. So let's look back at the label that I had. If we're, we're looking at this specific label, we have the arc flash boundary listed, which is good. We have the incident energy listed, and I don't see any PPE specifics listed there, so we don't have uh, both, so that's good. Uh, we have a working distance listed, which is gonna correlate more to your shock hazard. Now the shock hazard information that's listed here may not be exactly what we want, what's not ideal. There's nothing saying we can't have our electric shock uh, you know, information on the same label as our arc flash information, so that's not breaking any rules. But what I do see is missing here 
is for sure the date the assessment was completed. And we don't specific, even though the, the shock hazard exposure says 480 volts, um, you know, we can assume that that's the nominal system voltage, but to be a little more clear and to meet that, uh, that requirement around the 2026 NEC change, I would say that, you know, there should be a line item that says nominal system voltage. And if that is 480, you know, listed as such. Uh, so this particular label wouldn't meet the requirements of uh, 110.16 in the 2026 NEC. Now, I know that uh, the reality is, you know, the 2026 NEC may take a little time before enforcement starts taking place. Um, I think typically uh, Massachusetts starts uh, year one, so it would be January 1st, 2026, where they start enforcing it. Some other states may lag a little bit until you get to the 2026 NEC, but the thing that I'm excited about is I think once this is in place and once this is being enforced, you have labels right on the equipment as an electrician that will tell you what you need uh, to get for proper PPE to do the work on the, on the panel or, or motor control center or whatever you're dealing with, which is a big step, right? Because prior to that, uh, you had to, you know, gather the information, you know, maybe it was on the labels there, maybe it wasn't, uh, to be able to figure out what you needed for PPE based on using NFPA 70E. And that didn't necessarily always get done. That's not a good thing, uh, but I'm just, you know, I, I've been in the industry, I'm speaking from reality here. So having this sticker or label, I should say, right on the panel, right up front, uh, the piece of equipment, so you can see what you need exactly, I think is going to be a game changer for making sure that people aren't skipping a step of, you know, going and getting their 70 e book or pulling it up in link and figuring out exactly what they need for PPE. They're going to see right there what they have to have and they're going to use it. Now, it's important that, uh, you know, the, the facilities keep these labels up to date. Anything that happens, like a change to um, maybe a utility transformer that feeds the building is changed out if that impacts the available fault current or something like that, um, you know, that could change where these labels are at. So, of course, you need to make sure these labels stay up to date. Per NFPA 70E, you're going to have to make sure a minimum of every five years you're going to have to evaluate those labels anyway. Um, so I just think this is, this is a win for the electrical industry when it comes to electrical safety. Do you think the same thing? Drop it in the comments below. Until next time, stay current and stay safe.